What is happening with the weather, Albert? Well, the weather's going to be gorgeous the next couple of two or three days. After the cool front that rolled through on Friday and dropped all those thunderstorms has now allowed us to cool down and clear out. A high today of 65 degrees. Well, this is a real treat because you and I go back longer than we will both admit. Exactly. Uh, to having known each other. But I was at KTFM already, if you recall, just like a month or two. And the guy who was a DJ didn't work out. And, uh, you know, the PD went, knew you, hired you in Los Angeles, and brought you to San Antonio. And, you know, it just took off. I think that is the most fun I've ever had. I agree. We really were on the, we're on the tail end of fun radio. You know, I, I, brought, I, I was raised in San Antonio, as, as you were, and I grew up on Ricky Ware and, and Bruce Hathaway. Oh, yeah. When radio personalities were bigger than life. Right. You know, and so when I came back from Los Angeles, I was given full reign to do all the things that I'd not only learned in LA, but also to bring a lot of the, the Hollywood celebrities and everything else to the, uh, to the program. And we just had the time of our lives. We did. That was when radio was theater of the mind. Exactly. And that's really, you know, no matter what, whether the, we have the internet, whether it's cable, TV, podcast, you will never, ever be able to compare to that theater of the mind. Because if you were to listen right now, if, if, if the, the picture right now would, be go, would go out, and let's say they couldn't see what, what they're looking at right now, everyone would have a different picture in their head of what they were listening to, and right. where we were, right. and what we were describing and everything else. That's the wonderful beauty of radio. People maybe don't remember that you also worked for Disney. I did. I was really lucky uh, when I was in Los Angeles. In fact, in 1982, I heard that there was going to be a channel for Disney, the Disney Channel. And rather than wait to see if there were any openings for a host for any show, I created a show and took it to Disney. And they looked at me and, and I, I mean, I was doing my song and dance and we were going to do this, it was going to be this and this and that. And these guys in suits are looking at each other and there's a lady and she's looking and everything like that. And I'm in my mind, I'm thinking, they're not buying this. They're not buying it. But I kept going, kept going. And when I finished, they said, Sonny, we like your idea, but it's not what we're looking for. However, we have another show that we think you'd be perfect for. And I said, really? He said, yeah, it's called You and Me, Kid. And I ended up doing that for 11 years. Before you go to work for Disney, you go to Disney University. And for two weeks, you learn what Walt Disney saw with the company, with the really the, the, the idea that he wanted to make Disneyland and just everything he did magical. To graduate, they take you to the park. In this case, it was Disneyland and they get a costume of a character that's your size. Mine was Dopey. And you go <laughs> out into the park for an hour and you see the world through this little hole and you understand what, what Walt Disney was trying to do. And so then when you now go to do your host your show or sell popcorn or your vice president, it doesn't matter, you've got that Disney pride. Pretty amazing. Tell people some of the voices that you've done. Uh, well, you know, when I uh, first started doing cartoon voices was when I was a kid. I, I, I was really mesmerized with Yogi Bear, and there was this one little guy, his name was Yaki Doodle, and it was a little duck in the Yogi Bear commercial. I kept right. saying, Mr. Bear, would you be my mama? I don't have a mama. And so I, I put down the cornflakes that I was eating out of a box and watching a black and white Philco TV with a coat hanger for an antenna. And I got my little tape recorder and I started to do this voice. Mom, listen. M Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear. And she'd go, Ay, mijo, parece Bugs Bunny, que bueno. You know, she didn't like, know, she didn't yeah. know. So one day, out of my mouth came, Mr. Bear, Mr. Bear, would you be my baba? I don't have a baba. I'm just a poor little ducky. Well, I was, I mean, in shock. I couldn't yeah. believe that I, I, yeah. I'd actually gotten the voice. One day an agent calls me and says, you ever thought about doing cartoon work? I said, all my life, I've dreamt of it. He said, let me have some, some of your work and let me see what I can do. Two weeks later, he gets me a job. I pull into the parking lot of the Hanna-Barbera Studios yeah. to work on the new episodes of The Jetsons. And wow. with me are the original cast, including Mr. Spacely of the Spacey Sprocket Company, of George Jetson's boss, Mel Blanc. The voice wow. of Bugs Bunny, Elmer Fudd, Sylvester Tweedy Bird. So he became my mentor and he taught me all the voices. Eh, what's up, Doc? Be very, very careful. I'm looking for a widow gray weapon. Ah. I mean, it was just incredible. I was <laughs> in, I mean, it was in heaven. But what's great about it is that you got to do what you loved, but at the same time, you were a professional 
and you were doing it for a much bigger reason. We never, 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 never give up because we believe in what it is we're here for and what it is we're supposed to do. Plus, we like to have fun. We do. Thanks, Sonny. Thank you. I appreciate Mom, it. God bless you, Albert.